participant. In this video, I'm going to show you how to analyze survey data uh, using pivot tables. Alright, I'm going to show you how to turn a multiple response question uh, in your survey data uh, from something like this then to something very simple that will help you to analyze your data. And more importantly, what I'm going to show you is how to divide your multiple response uh, counts by the number of respondents in the pivot tables. That's very, very important. That will allow you to automate and, and, and be able to drill down uh, your data. All right, so let's get started. So before we move on, we need to uh, refresh our minds and get to know the different uh, schema that uh, you are likely to encounter depending on the platform that you are using to collect your data. So um, one of the schemas that you likely will encounter is where you have the multiple response question coming as a single column in each response uh, selected by the respondent is separated by a comma delimiter. So uh, platforms like Google Forms, there is a limited uh, option for you to specify how you want your multiple response question to appear. So uh, Google Forms will come with a comma delimiter, uh, comma separated delimiter. All right. So another one is uh, where we have a single column around yes, but then each, each response uh, or option is separated by a space. The limiter. So you may encounter this depending on the platform you're using. Then we have the third one where each selection uh, comes as multiple response. For some platform, you have the option to specify that you need your uh, multiple response to also come with just a single column we saw in option one and two. Uh, then uh, you also have them appear in multiple uh, in multiple, multiple columns. Uh, I will explain. We will look at uh, as we go through, you may get to understand uh, which one is better based on your situation. So in this case, each selection comes uh, as the response. So you have, if the person selected a tablet, the tablet appears. If the person selected a laptop, the laptop appears. So closer to this is another one where we have multiple uh, uh, columns, the options appear multiple columns, but each selection is coded as zero and one. Where one means that that option is selected, and zero means otherwise. And then uh, closer to this is where uh, we have multiple response, uh, where the options appear in multiple columns. But each selection is coded as yes or no. Where yes means that option is selected, and no means otherwise. And uh, another, other platforms uh, also code their responses are true or false. Uh, and it's similar to this last two. All right, so let's look at how do we handle each of this situation. So first, we are going to start with uh, where we have just a single column like Google Forms. If the data is coming from Google Forms or any other platform, or you decide to export your data in just a single column with commas separated. All right, so how do we handle it? So uh, first, we need to convert your data to table if it's not already table form. So control T and you'll be able to get your data into a table. So once we have your data in a table like this, so our multiple response question is this question. We ask the respondents which of the following devices do you own? So with the check boxes they will be able to select more than one. Uh, then once we have the data, you go to data, from data you go to from table or range, then you click on it and load it to power B. So uh, one practice that I do, uh, and for me it's a standard practice, is uh, the data that I'm uploading becomes like the, the, the reference database. So I name it as my data. So I uh, have data option one. So let's name it option one. So what I do often is that I have my primary, my reference database. Then whatever I'm pivoting that I'm going to do, I duplicate that database uh, and then I am pivot, I can delete columns that I don't need, I can do a lot of things with it. But at the end of the day, I can still link this table to this and be able to uh, dive deeper into my analysis using the filters and then drill down for insight. So uh, I, I mostly duplicate. 
for each multiple response that I want to, you know, I'm default. So it's very good to know that. All right. So for this one, I'll call it uh, option one, uh, question five. All right. So you can shorten the description of the question where you have more than one multiple response questions. You can short, uh, you can have short descriptions just for easy uh, reference. All right. So I have it here. Then uh, what you do is that you go to the multiple response column, just a single column in this case. Then when you click on it or just any cell in there, you go to transform. So from transform, you go to unpivot. So you need to select that column. So you selected this column. So unpivot, only selected column. So um, I wouldn't go into details as to which option to select, but depending on how you structure your survey, uh, one may be appropriate and, and more flexible than the other. But in this case, we just want to pivot only the selected column. So we have done that. All right. Now, so uh, when you do this, you see that you've not done anything, right? Okay. So let's delete that step. So what you do is that first we need to convert this to multiple columns. So I think now you're thinking about how about the one that that already has multiple columns, so this time would have been skipped. Unfortunately, for some platform like Google Forms, you don't have that choice. All right. So what you do is that you click on this, then you go to uh, split column. So we want to split uh, the options a column by delimiter. So by default, comma separator has been selected. And okay. So what is happening is that each column has been separated. So we we, the next thing is to unpivot. So we select all of those options. Uh, once we select that, what you do is that you go to unpivot. And unpivot only selected. So we'll be able to uh, convert it into a single column. And then uh, each respondent will now have uh, the number of responses that is selected. All right. So let's look at the uh the id so you realize that id one the person selected just one option so we have it one then id two responder number two selected two options so we have just two it will be repeated so each selection now becomes a row and then this person selected three in that order all right so are we done yes we are done so we can name this appropriately for us to be easily located in our data so what we do is that we say question five we can say the devices or uh, we can just name it as a short description that we can easily pick it up. All right, so that's it. So you are done. So you just go load. Let's load this to data model. Uh, and see what happens. So now when you load data models, you just establish connection. Add it to the model. We want just a pivot table in an existing Excel sheet. So we want to pivot it here. So we click here, you know, click here, and we have this. Okay, so the pivot table will appear there. So we have the pivot table here. So what we want to find out is, uh, put the responses in the column here, and then, uh, so this is the main data. So we, have to look at the unpivoted database. Okay. So we have, we put it in row, then we count it by the ID. I'll show you why we have to count by ID. We want to count by distinct counts. Look at something here. You realize that when we select counts here, you see, we have 50 respondents. Check the data. We have 50 respondents, right? But here we have the count is 74 because the respondent could select more than one, right? So when we divide by this 74, it doesn't give us an insight. It only tells us that for, let's say, desktop computer, this percentage, uh, out of all the total selections, selected desktop computer, it doesn't give us reference to the, 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 the number of respondents. So it's good to divide by the number of respondents, right? How do we do this inside the pivot tables? All right, I will show you. So let me, let's maintain this. Let's add the ID again. But now 
We will count it by distant count. Look at it. Great. So you see, we still have the same selections. All right. Okay. But now here we have the number of respondents, which we really need. So here we know that out of the uh, 50 respondents, uh, five, uh, you know, five respondents owns a desktop computer. Right. Great. So we divide by column total. Great. So look at it. So what is happening now is that we know that 94% of the respondents owns a smartphone. Let's sort it and look at something. We know that now 10% of the respondents owns a desktop. And this is insight. Like this gives us an insight and we know if our market size is, this is 30%, this is 1000, this, we know that based on some survey that we did with a reasonable sample size and based on the confident interval, we'll be confident that between these percent and this percent, uh, uh, would likely own a desktop computer, which is inside. When we divide by this, it hasn't given any insight. Look at it. So it only, this only tells us that, just a minute. So when we divide by this, what it just tells us is that, okay, so out of 74 selections, it doesn't give an insight. It doesn't give an insight. So that's it. So let's call this, uh, option one. Great. And we are done. Great.